Living in a van with pets. Van life with a dog. Hey, Abby, let's talk about Abby. Gotta have the bags. Paul puts it on the uh, leash. Good girl. Good girl. Hold on. Stay here. Sit. Sit. Good girl. She's a doodle dog. Yeah, look right in the camera. <laughs> sit down, sit. I got my treat bag. We got a treat bag. And these are training treats. Well, the small ones, there's some other little pieces in there. But it gets her attention. I haven't, I have, I'm not, in the past, I'm not a huge dog person, but I'm learning how to train her a little bit. We haven't got past too much of like, um, if she has something in her mouth that I go ahead and I go out and I toss one of these, is training her on the word out and she drops whatever. A lot of people say really, or they say other things, but this app that I found, it said, say the word out. So I say the word out and then I give her a treat. That way she doesn't hoard something or growl at somebody if they try to take something away from her. It gets her used to that. And the other thing I haven't got past is when I say, Abby, Abby, that I can get her attention. And when she looks at me, then I give her a treat. That way, if she's out walking around and she's not paying attention, and I need her to pay attention, that that way I can train her when I say the word Abby, Abby. See? So I can get her attention. Certainly does sniff a lot, like most dogs. And I wonder what it's like for a dog who travels all over the country. How many odors and fragrances do they have stored in their brain? If you know the answer, do they store these fragrances? Well, I hate to say fragrance. These odors. <laughs> um, yeah, I kind of curious. Does it make them more intelligent? When she's in a new area, she just, she's got her nose to the ground. Sit. Good girl, good girl. Well, Abby, whoops, she dropped it. Um, working with Abby is different. Um, I mean, even Paul, this is no reflection. Paul admits it. He didn't do any training on her for the until now. Um, after I met her and I wanted to walk her and I wanted to be with her. I mean, she is good protection for me. Um, when I'm out and about, especially like when I'm out and about at courtside, when I first met her, you know, walk her a little bit. But now when I'm out there, or even walking around at the park, she's a good protection for me. So I've had to train her a little bit, but guess what? She's nine years old, and um, I met her, I think she was eight years old when I met her. I mean, that's a long time to go without any, any training whatsoever. So that's when I suggested, let's get her some training treats and let's get this bag. So I was carrying a, a plastic Ziploc, but it wasn't working well. This is a really nice one because I can take it out. I can leave it open, but it has a nice drawstring to it. 
I'll leave the link for it. And I can open it up and walk around with it. And it just slips on, it's got a little slip. It slips in, a little hook or clip. Uh, she's doing a lot better, even Paul says yes. She's doing a lot better than she was before. I believe he had one of those electronic um, collars or electronic fences to where she could walk, just walk around. He could just open the door and she let her out. And she would go out and she knew the electric fence because it kind of shocks him. I'm not really sure exactly how they work. But she really just didn't have any training. And he didn't take her for walks, like around the neighborhood, you know, to walk her. So her walking on a leash for a long period of time is totally new to her. So I guess she's doing pretty good being, um, we started at eight years old, yeah. Um, but I think that's one of the reasons she does have kind of an attitude. She really wants to um, be with other dogs. And I think what she does is she barks at them. I've heard she doesn't like uh, male dogs. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not really sure. She wants to be petted. A lot of times when somebody new walks up to her, she just barks, barks, barks. And then they'll pet her and then they'll say, but she'll just stand there and bark, bark, bark. She wants you to pet her. I would like for that to um, be changed. You know, there's a lot of things with her I would like to be changed. But, you know, one step at a time. One step at a time. Paul keeps Abby's food. And let me get her a dish full. He had breakfast already this morning. And oh, okay. Ate a full dish. There we go. Now, how does she eat this? Just sparingly, a little bit at a time? Yeah. Or? She, I mean, if she's really hungry, like at breakfast, sometimes at dinner uh, in the evening, She'll eat half the dish, and sometimes the whole dish, especially at breakfast. She'll eat the whole thing. You're on candid camera. you deal with veterinarian visits for Abby? Well, I've only needed to do that once because I've only been on the road for a year and four months, but it wasn't too difficult. I went to the veterinarian that I wanted to go to and told them the story. They asked for the name and the number of, the vet, of my home veterinarian and I gave them that number and they, they got the authorization. They wouldn't do anything without my home vet uh, authorizing it, but it was, it was no problem at all, not a big deal. How easy it is, is it for somebody to just go about their business, become a nomad and take their dog with them? <clears throat> it's a lot of responsibility. Well, I mean, as far as veterinarians go. Oh, I don't think, I don't think that's anything to be concerned about. Okay. If you've been taking your dog to a vet on a regular basis, I'm sure that the home vet will cooperate with the travel vet and get things taken care of. No big deal. Where do you get Abby groomed? Well, I've been using... PetSmart. PetSmart, thank you very much. I knew the word pet was in there. 
<laughs> and it was really cool because I've had her groomed in uh, Tucson, Quartzsite, and the city where we are currently staying. <laughs> yes. And they have the records for that. <laughs> they do. Quartzsite, of course, doesn't have a pet smart. So I took Abby to a uh, groomer that she'd never been to before. Actually, I went to two different uh, groomers in Quartzsite. One a year ago or a number of months ago, and then one uh, uh, this last time. And I hated the job that she came back with. Whereas, when I went to PetSmart on a number of occasions, doesn't matter the location, she's got a record there and they know exactly how she should be groomed, what length, and so forth and so on. Much, much easier. Approximate cost is what? Oh, 70 to $80. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, when you go in shopping, how do you deal in the summertime with Abby and keeping her cool in your van? Well, first of all, find some shade. I know it's not easy in these uh, big mall parking lots or a grocery store parking lot, but if you can find shade, half the battle is won. Make sure she has water. Uh, windows are cracked a lot. Not, I shouldn't even say crack. Windows are six inches down. Um, if you can, leave a fan running. Uh, you know, anything you could think, what would I need to make me comfortable? Think about the same thing for Abby. Uh, now, a lot of times I notice you face where you have like the windows here. You face that away from the sun, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Of course, if you can find shade, you know, that problem is solved. But, and, and folks, it, it can be an aggravation. Case in point, we have been recently to the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon has free shuttles running all over the place. There are a couple of places that the shuttle runs a, a, a certain vantage point or something where cars cannot get there. Well, I wanted to do that. But I was afraid to leave Abby in the van because I wasn't sure how long am I going to be gone? How long does it take to get to the place I would board, to the place I wanted to see, and then complete the route to come back to where I'd left her? Yeah. And so I didn't go. So there could be a, just like, it's like having kids. I mean, you've got to keep that in mind. And so there's times, sometimes, that you have to sacrifice not going places yeah, because so. of that, yeah. But you know what? It's worth it to me to have the companionship and, and the joy that Abby brings me. Uh, it's worth it to me. Yeah. But that's something to keep in mind. If you want to go on a, 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 a five-hour tour of some kind, yeah, that's a long time to leave her alone. So would it be better to go on a three-hour tour? Uh, unless you, well, you have to think about that. What if we get stranded on a desert island? <laughs> <laughs> that would not be cool. So. Okay. Now, leash habits. What are your leash habits? She does not get out of the van without her leash. In the first place, almost any place you go, they're going to insist on her being a six, on a six foot leash. And on the second place, I just, Abby has not been off leash much at all during her life, except for when I lived in a bricks and sticks and there was a uh, invisible fence in the backyard. And so she's used to that, but she had that, that fence giving her a warning, don't you dare cross this line. But if we're out in the desert, uh, I, I don't trust her. Yeah. There are creatures out there that she can, whether it's a, anything from a scorpion to a rattlesnake to a coyote that she has to be afraid of, and she doesn't know any better. She's, she's curious. She's going to want to go out there and check that thing out, and that could not... Uh, it might not end very well is what I'm trying to so say. So there are dangers out there. Can you list other dangers that for dogs, small dogs, large dogs? Well, I mean, just <clears throat> uh, a hawk, uh, a bald eagle. Uh, 
if I don't know that one could handle Abby, but if you've got a small dog, they can be gone in a split second via lots of different dangers. So, well, they, and one thing that I'm concerned about is you keep your windows open for Abby, but and because she's a bigger dog, people are not going to approach her. I don't think right. they would want to. But if it's a small dog, they can tend to be taken. So if you're going to leave your windows down, any advice on leaving windows down if it's a small dog? Do you recommend it or not? Oh, that's a tough one. You, you've got to make that decision on your own. I mean, I if it's a smaller dog and you're going to travel with that dog, you've got to be prepared to do that, I would say. I mean, if you're traveling by yourself and you, it's you and that small uh, animal of some kind, you're going to have to be separate. There's a lot of places that you can't take them, and you're going to have to be separate from time to time. So you have to keep that in mind. I happen to know in Tucson, you can pretty much take a dog in anywhere, and you do not have to have service. I think it's because it is hot there, and people understand that. So in Tucson, it's very lax. You can be walking down the grocery store and there's this big walk, big dog on a leash okay. trying to lick the food yeah. <laughs> on the and, shelves. And I think that's great. But I think Tucson or other places in areas that get very hot, I think those are the exception to the rule. I really right. do. Right. Well, I did earlier mention that Abby had no training by you. But... I thus found you told me, you corrected me on that. Can you tell about Abby's training when she was a pup? When she was a puppy, she did go to PetSmart dog training, obedience classes. But shame on me, I never, because she had that invisible fenced-in backyard, I mean, I, when it was time to let her out, I just let her go. And it was no problem. And it was not me taking her for a walk and teaching her to heal, for instance, teaching her to not jump on people, teaching her to be a friendly dog towards other dogs. Uh, now, of course, I'm taking her to dog parks and she be behaves very well. She behaves, I believe, as well as in any of the other dogs in the park. But she wasn't given the opportunity to continue the training that she received as a puppy, and that's my fault. That's my doing.
I spent all 